So imaging is an important part of the workup and diagnostic process for myeloma patients. Um, and it is carried out initially to assess the extent of the problem, because myeloma is a disease that causes uh, bone problems and skeletal destruction. And so initially we want to gauge whether the bones are affected and to what extent. Um, and imaging can take the form of a number of different techniques. Uh, the most commonly used one is, is plain x-rays. And these are done of the, most of the skeleton actually, certainly the skull, the chest, the pelvis, the spine, uh, as well as the, the, the long bones of the arms and legs. And the idea of doing this is to basically detect so-called lytic lesions. Um, other imaging techniques such as MRI scanning and CT scanning uh, provide more detail and more information and they are sometimes used as well to help the doctors to establish the extent of the problem. Uh, X-rays are definitely the most common. They are widely available, um, very quick to do, although a whole skeletal survey can take a good half an hour to 40 minutes. Um, but the, there is a recognition that the other more complex imaging has a lot to offer uh, in addition. Uh, and it's, for the most part, both CT and MRI are also very widely available throughout the UK. Uh, so in, the answer is yes, MRI and CT are being much more commonly used in myeloma patients. One of the reasons also is because there have been advances First of all, in the imaging techniques themselves, that allows the scan to be delivered more frequently and more quickly. Um, but also because certain treatments are offered now which require additional scanning, uh, such as the insertion of cement into a collapsed vertebra. That's something you definitely have to have a scan for. An x-ray is not enough. So th those techniques are being used as part of the process in deciding whether someone may benefit from um, the so-called kyphoplasty or vertebroplasty, which is a cement uh, procedure. Um, so in general, all the scanning techniques are more on the rise, I would say. So the different types of scannings, scans that are available uh, include uh, CT scans, which stands for computerized tomography scanning, in which a patient does lie on a radiation, a, radio, um, a radiology bench and is passed into a tunnel um, where x-rays are applied and then the information received from those x-rays are taken in and analyzed by a computer. And the images are then reconstructed to give a three-dimensional image of that person. Um, sometimes, uh, in order to get a better picture of what's going on, uh, a patient will have a cannula inserted into a vein so that they can get what's called, known as contrast injected into their vein. That helps to highlight areas um, as blood flows through that area and that can give the radiologist additional information. With regard to contrast, uh, it's worthy of note that anyone who has kidney problems should not receive contrast. So it's useful for patients who know they have kidney problems to remind the, radi the, X -ray the radiologist or the radiographer that they may have a kidney problem and could they check that it's all right for them to receive contrast. Um, but standard CT scanning does not involve contrast and that's of no harm from that point of view. Um, an MRI scan involves uh, going into a tunnel um, Sometimes contrast is also given, but it's a different kind of contrast to the one in CT. Uh, they will, you also, there does need to be an awareness of uh, the kidney function, the, the, the radiology department would check on that. Um, this technique is, uh, takes about 30 to 40 minutes um, and uh, involves the use of uh, magnetism really to form, to align the water molecules within the body, um, which are then imaged and the information acquired and again reconstructed by a computer so that you can get an actual physical image. And MRI scanning is particularly good for looking at the spine and the nervous system. And in patients with myeloma who may get, who have often have back disease, 
It helps doctors to look at nerve roots and the spinal cord in great detail, more so than other um, techniques. There's another technique known as PET CT scanning, and PET stands for positon, sorry, positron emission tomography. Um, and this is what would, would be known as a nuclear medicine type of scan in which an injection of labeled glucose is given into a cannula, into the vein, um, and the glucose then circulates within the bloodstream and is taken up by tissues that are working very actively. So it's used very widely in, in the um, investigation of cancers because cancer tissues generally use up a lot more glucose than normal tissues. Its use in myeloma has definitely been uh, examined in, in a number of trials. Um, and it, it does have a role, but not in every patient. Um, myeloma is a disease that often occupies large volumes of marrow, bone marrow, but um, not in a very dense way. So PET scanning doesn't always show that kind of tissue up very well. It's much better when there's a really dense collection of cells which uh, take up a lot of glucose in one area, in which case you get a very, you, you get a um, very active area shown on the scan. There are some circumstances in, in the myeloma setting where PET scanning is useful. Um, in, for, for example, in patients who have plasma cytomas, where there's a concentration of the myeloma cells in one bone, uh, PET scanning can be useful in that situation because it, it shows that up very well. PET scanning also can help to show response to treatment because when you, if you treat something successfully, then the uptake of the glucose is reduced. So it is used in selected cases in that situation. It is an x-ray ba based technique. So that's another area that one needs to be aware of the exposure of the patient to radiation. I think it, the role of imaging is very, very important in myeloma and it's become increasingly so for a number of reasons. One is that the treatments for myeloma have improved considerably. So patients are living a lot longer with their disease. It is a disease that causes skeletal damage. And so if patients are living longer with it, safeguarding skeletal health is a priority so that people can live lives that are essentially normal, that they can function, whether it's at home or at work. Um, so a very careful look at skeletal health using imaging techniques is ideally is part and parcel of managing the patient alongside the treatments. Uh, thirdly, as I mentioned earlier, there are very specific interventions that can be offered to patients now, which involve the injection of cement. And so it is not simply a matter of being useful to know that there's a lesion there. The question is, perhaps something can be done about it, and it's only with appropriate imaging and assessment of that imaging that that kind of treatment can be instigated. So from that point of view, this kind of imaging is, has practical use as well. I would say that um, this is a field that is gradually evolving. Uh, in general, the scans are done at the time of diagnosis in order to assess the disease and the scans or x-rays, and then they're considered again further down the line, usually when someone needs new, a new phase of treatment. So in other words, when the, at the point of relapse, it's a way of assessing the skeleton once again. And so m many doctors would plan to repeat some kind of imaging or x-ray or scan at that point. Um, the other very important time to re-scan or re-x-ray is when patients develop new symptoms. So any new bone pain that's persistent or progressive, getting worse, which cannot be put down to something that the patient recognizes as being arthritis or whatever, that is a time when we would certainly rec generally scan or x-ray. Typically, it would be first an x-ray because it's simple, you can do it straight away. Um, but if there's still, if it's still unclear as to why the patient is in pain or it's, the x-ray doesn't show anything, then generally one would move on to another, to a scan such as an MRI to further clarify the nature of the pain or the pattern in that part of the skeleton. Uh, so a lot of the time after diagnosis, uh, x-rays or imaging are driven, the need for them, are driven by new symptoms or problems which, which the treating team feel need to be elucidated further so that it can help them decide whether any particular interventions are required. 
So while the, 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 the pros of, of being imaged are that you get a good picture of bone disease, the disadvantages include potential exposure to radiation. Um, X-ray techniques such as the skeletal survey is relatively limited uh, in terms of exposure to radiation. Um, and to be honest, the, X, the skeletal survey is generally used uh, not, ter not very frequently. It's used at diagnosis and possibly used at the time of relapse so that the doctors can assess whether there is uh, further any change in the bones. When you get onto a technique such as CT scanning, then the uh, X-ray exposure goes up much more quickly. And um, the equivalent, you get the equivalent of uh, 500 chest X-rays when you have a CT scan of your chest and you get about 600 chest x-rays equivalent when you have a CT scan of your abdomen. And these are the areas that would be imaged if we are looking at the spine, for example. So CT scanning is something that is not used to screen or to search for myeloma deposits. It is used rather to help doctors, it's helped to, to use them to direct towards lesions that may need radiotherapy, for example, so-called radiotherapy planning or these cement procedures, where you do need CT to help look at the bone density. MRI, by comparison, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, uses no X-rays at all. It's a completely different technique. And from that point of view, it's, it's highly advantageous compared to CT. However, MRI does not define the calcium presence within the bone as well as CT. So both techniques have their own particular uses and sometimes I use side by side to help, for example, radiologists or surgeons decide whether the skeleton needs a cement injection, for example. Uh, the downsides of MRI scanning are that it's, uh, well, both CT and MRI, they're both scans that involve going into a tunnel, lying still for quite a period of time, therefore um, possibly being uncomfortable. The radio radiographers who help set up the scans are very helpful in making the patient comfortable, but it's very useful to take adequate pain relief before you go for these scans, because if you have chronic pain and you go and sit and lie down in a scanner machine, that may get much, much worse. So the time is involved is longer. MRI scans can sometimes be felt to be rather claustrophobic for some patients, because the tunnel in which you are is quite narrow and some people find they struggle to cope with that for a half an hour period. It's also very noisy, but pa patients are given uh, headphones to protect them from the excesses of that noise. But in that sense, and, and oh, there are one or two contraindications or exclusions to MRI. So if someone has a pacemaker, they cannot have an MRI scan because it could interfere with the pacemaker. Or if they have had any, very rarely, if they've had any cerebral surgery, for example. But anyone who's put forward for a scan of that sort will be checked by the department to make sure they don't have any reason not to have the scan. Plain x-rays are, are usually very widely available. Sometimes patients need to come back for a skeletal survey because the radiology department can't accommodate them at the, on that day. The other kinds of scanning are also quite widely available, but sometimes there may be longer waiting times than would be desirable, both from the patient's point of view as well as the doctors looking after them. Uh, all radiology departments have a lot of demand on their time because people come from all angles for scans and so forth. That can be a problem, but on the whole, in the setting of treating cancer patients, waiting times are not usually too long. Uh, I would say things have improved over the years because there's a recognition that scanning is so integral to treating different cancers that unless you have adequate numbers of scanners and radiologists, uh, that'll be a block in the system. So I think on the whole, availability is better across the board. Um, the other thing is that m increasingly scans and results of scans, particularly complex scans, are discussed by a team of people with expertise in this area, and that's a very important feature. I would say, especially in, in patients with myeloma who have bone disease, the interpretation of some of these complex scans is, uh, is very, the nature of that interpretation is very important. Uh, if you have a radiologist who's used to looking at myeloma scans, they, then they are likely to give a better opinion than someone who is less used to that. So that sometimes, in my view, can be a limiting factor. 
Uh, but again, the the movement of patients between centres so that they get specialist input when necessary would involve review of those images by an expert group, which I think helps a lot. There are new imaging techniques around, uh, mainly around within the area of MRI. Um, there is a technique known as whole body diffusion weighted MRI, in which um, the it, what essentially happens is that the patient is imaged such that the entire bone marrow gives a signal. And in a disease like myeloma, where really the skeleton can be affected in its entirety in different areas, that's a very valuable tool potentially. Uh, now this is a technique that is not widely available uh, at, as yet. There are some centers where this technique is being used to explore its usefulness in patients with myeloma and to help guide treatment. It also is looking, people are looking to um, assess response to treatments as well. Some patients may not show a significant change in the protein level when they have, a, when they have their treatment. Um, and if we can get further information from scans to give us a, almost a quantification of disease levels in the bone marrow, that I, I think would prove helpful. Uh, but it's early days as yet in, in rolling out those sort of techniques, and they're still, there are, they are being assessed in trials. Not, I wouldn't say they're trials formally dealing with myeloma patients exclusively, but within the treatment of cancer patient groups, myeloma patients are being looked at uh, using these, some of these newer techniques. <laughs>